as some parts of the Caribbean region reopened its regional and international airports for commercial and charter flights to accommodate visitors from low and moderate risk destinations. Some nationals from various islands have begun returning to their home countries. As we are, however, about to find out in this report, regional repatriation for some has been a bit turbulent thus far. At the time of publishing this story, 14 Grenadian nationals, including 10 students, who left Jamaica on a Caribbean Airlines flight on Monday, July 20th, are stranded at the Grantley Adams International Airport. I interviewed the president of the Grenadian Students Association in Jamaica, Joe's Martha Bowen, who explained that their connecting flights to Grenada was abruptly cancelled by Fly One Caribbean Airlines, who cited an alleged revocation of landing privileges by civil aviation authorities in Grenada. So we were, be, we were browsing and looking to trying to figure it out what's the best way to get home. Um, so as a result, um, we saw that Caribbean Airlines comes has a flight from Jamaica to Barbados on Mondays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And so we also realized that Fly One Caribbean, ha, um, which is an incoming regional carrier, I'm, I'm putting that in inverted commas, um, they have advertised on their sites that they have flights. And so there's a flight that coincided with this Monday's flight. Okay. So we chose the Monday because the Monday was an, a nice transition day connection, Jamaica, Barbados, and then get the Fly One Caribbean Barbados to Grenada. Uh -huh. So, and that was something that had been, we, we, not only for the students, but there were other Grenadian nationals in Jamaica who I was liaising with. Uh -huh. So as a group, we said, okay, th this is an opportunity. Let's see how we can, we can get home. So anyways, we, we came in with faith. And we were hoping that we get the one Caribbean flight, you know, to get home. Um, while we were leaving Jamaica, then we learned that Fly One Caribbean is no longer offering flights. So I except contacted on, the rep. Except on their website, I don't mean to interrupt you. On their website, <laughs> as you just saw, they are All still right. advertising uh, still flights advertising to flights, yeah. Grenada, which does not reconcile with the communication that you indicating that you received. Uh, no, from it, from the the airline representatives on the ground in Grantley Adams, in Saint Vincent, in Saint Vincent actually is the is the, is the agent I've been speaking to because I I personally called the agent to okay. find to air some concerns re the same availability of flights, and I was assured that Car for Fly One Caribbean is not an, an old customer to Grenada is not a sorry not a new customer to Grenada they have uh, they have always flown into Grenada and yes the flight is on. So there is, and there seems to be no problem. So that is why I said, okay, students, let's go. Friday is a day. We, we let's take it now or leave it. So Friday, Friday is the day when we actually got this stuff together to, to get the flights. What right, are so, they suggesting as a solution with respect right, to getting so, to Grenada? At this moment, um, the latest I've had from them um, was that. They would have. They, they were going to take us from Barbados to Saint Vincent, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, they were holding discussions on that, um, where they would put us up, and then, uh, when it's possible to fly to Grenada, then they would bring us to Grenada. The airline currently lists five weekly return flights to Grenada from its Bridgetown hub, except on Tuesdays and Fridays, with one-way airfares starting at around U.S. $150. A press release from the Grenada Tourism Authority, published on July 20th, however, does not mention Fly One Caribbean as one of the carriers flying from Barbados, instead stating, quote, Caribbean Airlines have confirmed their schedule from Barbados to Grenada to start on July 22nd. Turks and Caicos-based Inter-Caribbean Airways is also set to launch non-stop flight service to Grenada's Morris Bishop International Airport beginning August 1st, unquote. What Bowen says next, however, is also not congruent with official statements from St. George's. All right, they're saying that their permission to land was revoked by the government of Grenada. And that government is only doing charter and repatriation flights and not commercial flights. 
Okay. Did they say what will happen when you guys get to St. Vincent? I mean, they would give know. they would put us up in accommodations until that Saturday. Which would also mean going through another quarantine process, I assume. Another process again, right. and then we moni- and then we're monitoring the COVID cases in in St. Vincent, which puts us at more risk. Since arriving in Barbados on the evening of July twentieth, Bowen intimated that she reached out to two government ministers in Grenada, as well as a senior bureaucrat in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to register their frustration with how their self-funded repatriation to Grenada was handled by the airline and by Grenada's honorary consul to Jamaica, Ken Sylvester. And then he said to me that government is not going to, to, to help us and assist us. Plain and plain and plain spoken just like that. Because we were not sent by government. We're not students on scholarship. So okay. I said to him, I, I said, really? He said, yes. So, um... In also, then we got correspondence from a, a, a foreign services officer whose name I'm not going to mention, um, who said to us that, oh, government is not doing, going to do any repatriation. Actually, he made, a, he gave us, a, he gave me a notice to post and share with all the students. I can send that to you. I've spoken to Senator Cox, who That's made a Nolan request Cox. for, no, Nolan Cox, yes who has made a request for the names of all the Grenadians. There's 14 of us, 10 of 10 university students and 14 of us, four, four of the nationals, sorry. So I sent our passport information to them, to him, sorry, together with the flight information. So he requested that information, so I've sent it to him. And also um, Minister Emmeline Pear called not too long ago to see what is our situation. And then she advised us that, um, tomorrow morning to call one caribbean to hear what they're saying and to press them if it's to refund the 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 um our monies to us and then she says she's going to speak to the attorney general as to look at the legalities of of what um what happened with one caribbean in terms of the but purchasing did you did you like press that. did you press the minister with respect to one caribbean's reasoning because one Caribbean, no, I didn't. one Caribbean is saying that the government of Grenada, uh, they, they, they're putting this blame on the government of Grenada, mm-hmm. right? As opposed to their mm-hmm. obligation to take you home. All right. right? Senator, um, Senator Cox, so I did because I said that we well, all we want to do is get home. And he was saying that there seemed to have been an issue with one Caribbean over the weekend when they came into Grenada. I don't know what the issues is was so i cannot uh-huh. speak directly to the issue but he indicated that there may have been a problem with one caribbean um when they came into grenada over the weekend which may have led to all of this the bub report also contacted education minister emlyn pear and civil aviation minister dr claris modest cohen to get a response from the government efforts are also being made to contact fly one caribbean for an explanation at the time of publication, the stranded Grenadian student said they're spending the night in the arrival hall at the airport in Bridgetown after being advised of the building's closure. All the stranded nationals who were given a COVID-19 PCR test on arrival tested negative. From Washington, D.C., this is Kellen Bunn.